Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is orbit. Let's take a look at some of the definitions or ways that we use this verb. The first way you're likely to hear orbit used is to mean to move in orbit around a star or a planet. Um, I've picked this particular verb as well as some others uh, that are connected to uh, space travel um, because it's something uh, we've been discussing in one of my uh, ESL classes and looking at some new words and, and vocabulary related to it. And so with this first definition, you might think of uh, astronauts uh, moving around, stars, planets, etc. Uh, a second way you might hear orbit used is just to mean to fly or move around in a circle. So again, that first definition, I, I very much think of space. Um, and uh, the second one, I, I would think of more closely kind of related to things on Earth. And, and we might just be describing kind of that um, uh, process of, of moving around in a circle. A third way you might hear orbit used is to mean to put a satellite into orbit. So uh, this third definition, I would say, connects uh, kind of to our first one. Again, something in, in outer space. You should know that orbit is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, all we're going to do is add ing to form orbiting. The past tense and participle forms of this verb are made by adding ed. Our base verb, orbit, t -t -t, ends in a t sound. So our past tense ending is going to make an id sound. And we're going to add an extra syllable as we say it. It should sound like this. Orbited. Orbited. Okay. Now uh, we're going to take a look at one phrasal verb you might hear with orbit. Doesn't really change our, our definition too much, but I wanted to point out you might see orbit around. And again, this is implying that circular movement around something. An example of this might be, the flies were orbiting around our picnic table, right? So you might imagine food out on the table, right? And the flies are circling. Now let's practice using our verb of the day orbit in two different verb tenses. Today we're going to practice the present progressive. You might also know this is the present continuous and we're going to practice the present perfect. Let's start with the present progressive. We use this verb tense to describe an action that is in progress or an action that is happening right now. I like to call this the present progressive because the two P's in the name help me remember that I need two parts to make this verb tense. I need a present form of be, so that's am, is, or are, and then I need the ing form of the verb. An example of this might be space junk is orbiting the planet at 17,000 miles per hour. Um, so again, this is describing something something that's happening right now. We might not think about this, uh, but it is certainly occurring. If I want to make a negative present progressive sentence, then I need to insert not after my be verb. And again, I'm going to use the ing form of the verb after that. You can see this in my example. These stars are not orbiting the center of the Milky Way. So here someone, uh, maybe an astronomer, is looking at something, pointing, it, pointing out uh, a particular cluster of, of stars and saying uh, where they are in, in relation to uh, the Milky Way. Now let's look at a yes or no question in the present progressive. To do this, we're going to start with a present form of B whichever form matches our subject, the subject comes next, and then we use that ing form of the verb. Here's another example. Is the new planet orbiting a star in our solar system? I think there have been news articles recently about uh, some scientists potentially discovering a new planet, and there are many questions being asked about that. Now let's take a look at the present perfect. 
we use this verb tense uh, to either describe something that occurred at the, in the past, but at an unknown point in time. Sometimes you'll hear this described as the indefinite past tense. But we also use it to describe an action that started in the past and continues into the present. To make the present perfect in the affirmative, I also need two parts. I'm going to use a present form of uh, have. So again, I've got to pay attention to my subject. If my subject is I, you, we, or they. I will use have. But if my subject is he, she, or it, I will use has. And then we're using the participle form of the verb. But again, since orbit is a regular verb, the participle and the past tense form look the same. Let's take a look at an affirmative example. The International Space Station has orbited 227 nautical miles above Earth. Right? So this is an idea of something that started in the past and it continues today, right? It's, it's still ongoing. If I want to make a negative present perfect sentence, again, I'm going to start with have or has, uh, whichever form matches my subject. Um, but then I'm going to insert not and then the participle. Now, you might hear some speakers or see some writers uh, link have not and has not uh, into contractions. You might hear hasn't or haven't. You'll see haven't used in my example sentence here. The new pilot and mission specialists haven't orbited Earth before. Right? So here we're talking about, uh, sounds like two new astronauts who uh, have not circled uh, a planet or the stars in space. Lastly, let's make a yes or no question in the present perfect. To do this, again, we'll start with have or has, uh, whichever form matches our subject and the subject comes next, then we're going to use that participle form of the verb. Here's an example sentence. Has an all civilian crew orbited the earth? Okay. Now let's take a moment to look at some words that are related to our verb orbit. And the first word we're going to look at is just the noun form of this word. So same spelling, same pronunciation. Just like our verb, the noun orbit can have a few different meanings. We're going to look at three. One way to use the noun orbit is to refer to the curved path of a space object or spacecraft uh, that is moving around a star, a planet, possibly the moon. An example of this might be, is the asteroid in the Earth's orbit, right? So is it in our curved path? Another way you'll hear the noun orbit used is to refer to a range or sphere of activity or a, a sphere of influence. An example of this might be, she's been extremely generous to everyone in her orbit. Okay. So here we're not talking about someone who's traveling in space, um, but we might be talking about the people with whom this person interacts regularly, maybe co-workers, maybe family, maybe she's a volunteer. Uh, and so again, um, she has been kind, she has been generous. Another way you might hear the noun orbit used, and, and this might come up if you're studying science, um, particularly the human anatomy, um, is to refer to the bony part of one's eye socket. So. An example of this, the orbit protects the eye. So another related word you might hear is the adjective orbital. This is just relating to an, an orbit or orbits. An example here, the U.S. is examining how to track orbital debris to prevent collisions. So orbital, right, is describing where this junk is is or debris right in space uh, and this idea that it's it's moving around our last word today is the noun orbiter this is generally used to talk about a spacecraft that's designed to go into orbit um, and many times it's used um, for 
uh, satellites and things that that aren't necessarily meant to land perhaps on another planet or another place. An example of this, the orbiter is designed to study the atmosphere of Mars, right? So we're talking about some kind of spacecraft here um, that is going to travel through space into the atmosphere of Mars. Um, but I, again, the idea here would be that it's not trying to land on the, the planet. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great day.